continue while there was a buying to each and every one of you. This day of all days, as we remember Anzac, our Australian New Zealander service men and women, we also need to remember that there are other people from other countries and many countries around the world. Australia has become home to many of these people and part of the Anzac tradition in that we need to acknowledge and pay our respect to all servicemen and women and to their families and to the children and their loved ones because war is a tragedy that affects everybody not for just today, tomorrow, but many, many decades to come. I think that there are some difficulties with the way that we are setting Anzac Day up to be a, a major Australian festival. And to some extent, what we're seeing now is a vicarious interest in that, that, those battles, particularly the Gallipoli battle, which was an absolute disaster. The way in which Australians were sent to fight in that battle in Gallipoli is a little bit like the way in which we sent people to Iraq. It was done in a setting which, looking back on it now, we see was really quite bad. We were part of the empire. It was glorified that we were going to defend you know, the king and country and so on. But from this distance, it seemed such a waste. First uh, Anzac Day remembrances in, in uh, Melbourne uh, were soldiers getting together and trying to make sense of what they'd been through. It was like uh, trying to come to terms with their trauma. National holidays play a really key role in highlighting uh, particular, particular stories to ourselves of what kind of place we live in, what kind of community we are part of, what kind of society we belong to. And so I think it's really important to pay attention to those days and to think about, again, whose stories they represent, who they, in, who they include, and how people who might not relate so much to the original story are still, are still part of it. When I arrived here 35 years ago, this society had uh, quite a strong anti-Japanese feeling, and I suffered or that I felt the pain because of that. And that. But I didn't know what to do, the pain I had for many, many years. <laughs> we've got a really mixed community here and we've got lots of people who've settled here, uh, particularly from Germany, and of course some Japanese as well, and some feelings about particularly those two nations run deep in our community and I think when we come to the times of commemoration we need to remember that there are people who live here whose fathers and grandfathers and mothers and grandmothers were part of the conflict on the other side if you like. Australia is now multicultural so Anzac Day should be a time when we don't just think of Australians who suffered soldiers who died and their parents and families who grieved over them. But uh, branch out wider, thinking about the Japanese who've suffered and the Germans and those who have been our enemies in wars. We are a re refugee welcome zone and we are blessed by having over 150 um, people, particularly from um, five African nations, who've come to live here. They were refugees in, uh, mostly in s fleeing persecution or in refugee camps. And our community is by far the richer for their presence. What we need is more people to take a stand against, uh, you know, the sort of latent racist attitudes which have coloured this country, to be more generous in helping strangers in our society reminding governments of the need to take a humane line in, in, our, in, in aid abroad and in handling refugees. Um, you know, achieving a, a multicultural and an inclusive society needs a, uh, a, a multifaceted approach, starting at the grassroots.
governments can uh, can lead, but it's the likes of you and I who will make it happen.